Well, good day. It's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I've just finished up doing the automatic gain control, so I thought I'd do a, uh, a quick video looking at that. If you recall, um, back when I was initially thinking about the radio, I was going to do a digital AGC, so to speak. So, digitize um, either the IF um, amplitude or the audio frequency amplitude, and then feed that into um, the Arduino, and then have that drive a digital um, DAC to then output a varying DC voltage to, to vary the MC1350. Um, those uh, devices are still on order, but as it turns out, for, for whatever reason, in my particular case, um, the maximum gain for the MC1350 is 6 volts, um, which wouldn't work with that um, digital AGC, so to speak, because I don't ever, ever be able to get out 5 volts, so that's not really going to work, unfortunately. Uh, well, not at the moment, anyway. So I've, I've done an analog one, which I'll talk to very quickly. So anyway, so suffice to say, that 1350 um, maximum gain is um, at 6 volts, and as the voltage increases, the gain decreases, um, and my ideal range for varying um, the gain of that second IF amp is between 6 and 7 volts. So down here we have the actual um, AGC itself and uh, in a sec we'll just go through the circuit diagram. Um, there's two parts to it, I was, I was playing around with both uh, an intermediate frequency um, based um, AGC system which is the, the bottom part here and also audio frequency. So this amplifier up here is an audio frequency amplifier which is actually not being used. So disregard um, that top part of the circuit there. So in terms of the actual circuit itself, if we were to... Um, okay, let's just probably go this way be the best way, I think. So let me just zoom out a tad there. So in the end, um, this is what I've, I've, uh, I've come up with. Um, again, there's nothing new here. Uh, you'll see certain examples of, of this DC amplifier uh, in various forums and in various textbooks. Um, so this is just me having a bit of a play around with that and then sort of looking at some of the values and trying to empirically work out what they may be um, before actually uh, making up the circuit. Uh, on the left hand side coming in, so we've got the audio, uh, say again the intermediate frequency coming in, um, that's going through an RF amplifier. Um, the RF, that RF amplifier there is exactly the same as the first IF amp um, in the actual radio itself. So if I was to skip back to this page here, um, so this is the IF amp, no difference. So base rate of 3904, I've got an ICQ of 10 milliamps, um, and that's it. So exactly the same maths, I, I'm not going to go through it now, um, but all the same values of all the uh, resistors are exactly the same. Um, the only difference is uh, in order to minimize the load on the IF, um, I've, I've just used a 0.1 nanofarad capacitor as opposed to say a 100 nanofarads. Um, so I've cut that right down just to sort of take a, a small sample of the IF, amplify it, and then use the DC amplifier there to, uh, to amplify it. So if just running through it here, um, as I just mentioned, from an IF point of view, uh, I've set the, the quiescent current at 10 milliamps. The beta DC is exactly what we saw from the uh, IF amplifier video. And as I just mentioned there, uh, the input capacitor there is sitting at 0.1 nanofarads. So the theory here is that IF gets amplified, uh, gets dropped across that 10k ohm resistor. And we're using an RFC there, which is 10 turns on an FT37-43. Um, and then we're detecting it straight away. So I've got a little 1N4148. Um, no series uh, resistor there, so that's got a fast charge, charging up there that one microfarad capacitor. Um, as that capacitor charges up, um, it can either discharge through one of two routes, either through this uh, resistor here, um, and I'll, you'll see in a sec there, I elected to make those variable pots so I could set the, uh, the time constant. Uh, there's a slow route there, and if this switch is made here, this resistor here is placed in parallel with that, and this is quite a bit smaller, um, which gives me fast AGC. That DC voltage, which is sitting on that capacitor there, um, is amplified through the uh, MPF102, and then the voltage drop across that um, 
source resistor there is then being detected, well not detected, is then being fed into the uh, the 741 op amp. So it's in a, uh, a not an, uh, in a non-inverting uh, configuration. Um, its uh, amplification value there is um, minus RF over RN. So I've, I've set RF to be 100k and th then through experimentation uh, worked out that 1k was the best to get the overall AGC range that I wanted given um, the amplification factor here uh, etc. So um, that was a, a value like I say worked out through experimentation. That 100k ohm pop there sits between ground and VCC and then that just allows the output to be set for a no signal input to be in my particular case 6 volts. So like I say with no input that gets adjusted to give 6 volts output in other words a maximum IF gain uh, through the radio. Um, 100k could have been a 10k it's just uh, I had a hundred, uh, quite a few 100k's sitting in the junk box so I just elected to use that. Um, so we just mentioned here that right so I, I mentioned before that I want the output of this to be a range between 6 and 7 volts. Um, now from a time constant with a capacitor, a CR time constant, so tau um, is, is our capacitance times resistance. So on charge, um, one time constant is the time it takes to charge up to 63% roughly. Uh, and then after five time constants you're effectively at 100%. And uh, vice versa for discharge, uh, one time constant would have the capacitor discharging down to around 37%. And then after five time constants, you'd be down to zero. So based on that, what I wanted is, you know, roughly for the slow AGC setting, um, I wanted the radio to recover in that sort of one to two second range. And then for fast AGC, it's sort of around 50 to 100 milliseconds. Um, I've elected to make those, as I mentioned before, pots. So I can fiddle around and play around with these values here to get uh, a fast and slow setting which uh, is pleasant to the ear so um, I've yet to have a good play around with that on ear but um, it's certainly working at the moment so um, what I've elected to use is two one megone trim pots we mentioned before that that capacitor there is a one microfarad capacitor so our tower would be one microfarad times one mega ohm comes out of one second so therefore five time constants is five seconds so uh, suffice to say by using a one mega ohm trim pot, um, I'm in the ballpark to get where I want to. So by just by decreasing that I can get down to the sort of the figures I want to. And I've got a sufficient fat to play around. Um, something else just to uh, bear in mind too, that MPF 102, the maximum current that can pass through that off the spec sheet uh, is 22 milliamps. So in order to minimize uh, that current to around 75% of max, um, that gives us a uh, a source resistance of, not gate, uh, yes that should be 13.8 divided by 0.7 times, 0.75 I should say, times 22 milliamps is 836, so we'll use a 1k ohm resistor. So that source resistor there is uh, 1k. Um, and those two bullet points I have already mentioned. So in terms of how it, how it performs, um, at the moment what I've got by way of a test setup is I'm tuned well, more the point, I've got the SIG Gen set up here, 7.1 megs, just got a little rubber ducky antenna there, um, and that's just coupling across to the input to the radio. Uh, the output will be, we'll just monitor that on the speaker. So if I was now to drop the frequency down, down to, we can start to hear that, uh, hear that carry wave coming through there. This switch here is um, AGC on off, so at the moment that's AGC off. Uh, in that particular case, there's a little trim pot there that then just provides exactly 6 volts to the circuit. And then with the AGC on, um, that little trim pot is now taken out of circuit and the AGC is all being generated from within. Sorry, I'll slot your screen there. Is now being generated all from within the AGC amp. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set that at a volume. Um, as you can see, the AGC is... In fact, let's turn it off for a start. And then we'll just play around with the amplitude coming out. And what we'll hear 
um, is that audio frequency uh, increasing significantly in volume because the AGC is turned off. So that's one volt. So quite a significant amount of um, volume variation there. So I won't touch the, um, the volume there and we'll just turn the AGC on and we'll repeat the process and now we'll have a much more constant volume coming out. So we're now up to 20 volts. That's now zero so it doesn't count. So one volt. So there, just no, that's pretty good as far as I'm concerned. That's um, nice and uh, nice and steady. So we'll drop that down to say um, three volts will do, and we'll look at the fast and slow AGC. So at the moment the switch is in the fast AGC position. So if we were to flick between fast and slow, you see the recovery there. So that recovery is in the in the fast position. That switch is down for fast. So AGC off, and then we'll force it on. So ideally that's, I'm sort of aiming for fast AGC, I, I said around 100 milliseconds, um, we'll see how that sounds uh, on air, but suffice to say by adjusting that little trim pot there, then I can adjust that one. I can now turn off fast AGC, in other words it's now on slow AGC, AGC off, so that's now a lot slower. Again. Uh, once we get on air uh, later on, I'll, I'll play around with that potentiometer there um, and I'll be able to set how fast, more the point, how slow is slow for the slow AGC. Anyway, so I think I'm going to leave it there. AGC on, like I say, just fiddling around with that volume. That output of the uh, trim pot there, say again of the SIG gen, that's you know, up to 20 volts there. And then AGC off, do it again. So um, I think that's that's pretty good actually. So like I say, the proof will be in the pudding later on um, when we get some on-air signals, but uh, certainly with the SIG gen, it's giving every indication that it's working um, how I wanted. Now I'll say 73 is there, and uh, hopefully that was of some use, and um, have a think about what to do next. Okay, cheers all.